Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone, you're all welcome. Um, I believe you must have watched my last, last video when I was trying to introduce integration by parts and this is a formula we're using V du dx equals to uv minus u dv dx dx and I said we're going to treat these examples x in x, x cos x and x e raised by x so we're going to treat x in x dx x cos x dx and x e raised by x dx of course once you see this integral sign it means and you see this dx it means you have to integrate you see this integral sign dx means integrate now when you see x in x or x cos x x e raised by x you have to use integration by parts integration by parts so uh, i want to show some rules some things we need to look out for when doing integration by parts now the formula of course you're going to say v du dx dx equals uv minus u dv dx dx so what it means is that if you look at this question again x in x it means one of your question will be called v and one of your questions will be called du dx so you're going to break up your question into two parts one must be called v and the other must be called du dx do you get now i want to give us rules on which of them should you call v and which of them should you call du dx now these are the rules now if you look here you see i wrote v possible values possible values of v possible values of v should be one inverse trigonometric functions who are inverse trigonometric functions like sine inverse of x cos inverse of x two under possible values of v should be logarithmic function logarithms logarithmic functions like log x in x in x plus one logarithmic functions so anytime you have a question that has logarithm that person should be called v or inverse trigonometry like sine raised to minus one x that's your possible values of v now what are your possible values of du dx one you have your exponential functions like e raised per 5x e raised per 3x two we have trigonometric functions like cos x cos 2x and sine 3x this should be the possible values of du dx because if you look at this formula again for integration by parts now i must inform you that this is not the only formula we have for integration by parts so there are this other formula that one can still use too do you understand which will still give you the same answer but i feel like this is easier to understand do you get so the formula says v du ds first of all this is the question part this is the answer part so the formula says you must call one of your question v and one of your question du dx so i just showed you, who you, are, who you the possible people you can call v and who you can call du dx the people you can call v again is inverse trigonometric functions logarithmic functions who do you call du dx exponential functions trigonometric functions should be called du dx so let's now go back to one of the first question don't forget i said v should be logarithmic functions inverse trigonometric functions let's try and tackle that first question this first question says we should find integral of x in x dx so we are looking for integral of x in x dx so according to the rule don't forget you said who should we call v your v possible values of v is what logarithmic functions now first of all don't forget this formula one person must be v one person must be du dx so when you see x and in x it's clear that your v must be in x because according to that rule i just showed you now your possible values of v should be logarithmic functions like in log x in x in x plus one those are your possible values of v log x in x and in x plus one so in this question now your v is in x and your du dx should be x because your question is x in x and we're using this formula v du ds dx equals uv minus u dv dx so v let in x be v and let this x here be du dx now once you have done this now the next thing now is if you go back to this formula for integration by parts we need u we need v and we need dv dx now we already have v but we don't have u and we don't have the v dx yet we have v here but we don't have u and we don't have the v dx but class we can get u 
If du dx is x, what do you think will be u? Now, class, if du dx is x, we can get u by integrating x. Because du dx means x has been differentiated already. So if you want to get u back, you have to integrate this x to get u. Class, please take notes. I want to just do something little here. If they give you a question like this, dy dx, given that dy dx equals to 2x, and they say find y. If you are given a question like this, given that y dx equals to 2x, find y, what do you think you are going to do? You know, most times they usually give us y and they say find dy dx. If they give you y and they say find dy dx, you usually differentiate y to get dy dx, right? You differentiate y to get dy dx. Now, if they are giving you dy dx and say find y, will you differentiate again? No, you integrate this time around. Don't forget that differentiation and integration are word and opposite of each other. So, I want to repeat myself again. If you are giving y, let's say you are giving y and you are asked to find dy dx, what do you do? You differentiate y to get dy dx. Now, this time around, they are giving you dy dx and say find y. What will you now do to get y? You integrate. Do you understand? So, integrate. 2x how do you integrate you add 1 to the power this 2x means 2x raised to power 1 currently so if you add 1 to this power it becomes 2x raised to power 2 then divide by the new power 2 there are two steps in integration add 1 to the power then divide by the new power so add 1 to 1 you have to divide by new power 2 2 cancels 2 here and y is x squared so please take note if you are giving the y ds and ask to find y you have to integrate so come back coming back to our question if we have du dx as x and say find u, we integrate x to get u. So u therefore must be x raised to power 2 over 2. Because x means x raised to power 1. If you add 1 to 1 and divide by the new power, you have x squared over 2. Now, in our formula for integration by parts, we need, don't forget, we need u, we need v, and we need dv dx in the formula. So we have v already, we have u. Let's go and get dv dx. dv dx. means we have to differentiate v to get the vdx dvdx means differentiate v differentiate v if you differentiate who is v v is in in x differentiating in x will give us one all over x we should remember that that in x is one all over x now as it stands we have everything we need for our formula everything we need is available now we just need to start solving so guys um it's time to start solving now so applying the formula the formula says v du dx dx equals uv minus integral u dv dx dx so who is u now u is x squared over two let's apply so that will give us U is x squared over 2. Who is v? V is in x. Don't forget. Times in x. Minus. Integral. Who is u? X squared over 2. Don't forget. U is x squared over 2. Dv dx is 1 over x. Dv dx is 1 over x. We have just following the formula then. Dx. Dx. Now if you watch carefully. You find out that x can cancel 1x here. Leaving it with only 1x remaining here. So you're now going to have x squared over 2 in x minus integral. What is left? x all over 2 dx. Now, so anytime you're integrating, always remember to add plus c or plus k. Either you see or k to represent the constant. So you're going to say x squared over 2 in x minus class. This integral sign means integrate x over 2. This integral sign means integrate x over 2. If you integrate x over 2, don't forget when you're integrating, add 1 to the power divided by the new power. Currently, the power of this x here is 1. So if you add 1 to this power, it becomes x squared all over. There's already 2 down. So if you bring this other 2 down, you have x squared over 4 plus c. So 2 times 2 can become x squared over 4. So the final answer, let's put our final answer here. Our final answer can be x square over 2 in x minus x square over 4 plus c this will be our final answer i'll solve the next question in the next video let me know what you think about this video thank you